slow down the process. And it's, it's a little tricky. You have to set up some rules. There are going to be slightly different rules than per the zoning ordinance, but that doesn't mean you can just say yay or nay. If they comply with the rules, yeah. it's yay. Yeah. Yeah. There's, no, there's no question about it. There's no decision for you to make. Um, and that's what's, I think, the tricky part about it is establishing rules that are going to sur survive any kind of legal scrutiny don't slow the process down in order to The flip side is it's kind of the antidote to pyramid zoning. Kind of. It's a tool. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the fix, but it's, it's a tool. So currently, our specific zoning district is very permanent. What's the way, that you, you might talk about it says with the provision of certain conditions and restrictions. Could you talk a little bit about what sure. types of things might typically be? Typically, like one of the reasons for many of the uses we have specific use permit is, uh, is uh, traffic issues, for example. So if they are met, so you, re you can require a, a, a traffic study with it. Uh, of course, one of the best things with this process is you see what you're approving. So they have to submit a certain set of plans, a site plan, an elevation plan, you know, if you want a color palette. Th those things you see before you are approving the project. Which is right now with our zoning, they just do it meets and bounds of the property and it's speculative zoning. You don't know what's going on. So, uh, so like again, traffic uh, is this analysis is one of the biggest ones which we only come in with, with specific use permit. Landscaping plans, building elevations, uh, those specific, uh, certain specific criteria that you could uh, at least recommend or you know ask ask if the developer wants to do it. So it, it, it's more it allows you more more uh, ability to negotiate and more ability to to add certain requirements. But then the property owner wants something to Yeah, they want the, the, the development. They want yeah, but there's a reason they want to go <laughs> under SUP. They, they, there's something better for the, them underneath that. If they already have a zoning in place that lets them build your typical shopping center. If Unless they want something different, they'll just go build a typical shopping center. Well, not if you enact that SUP order that says these certain uses will have to come under an SUP order. Right. That's if you're talking SUP about does. every property, you have to be not an isolated incident. Sure. Right. So if you say. But you basically have changed the zone. Mm -hmm. so you change the, like, you, you know, you, the permitting. Sure. Part. Essentially, put an overlay, overlay. A layer on top right. of it. And it would be it has all to do, of them. It has to do with different things than use. Yeah, we're not, all not disputing the use, we're just saying the use, the use has to comply with certain exactly. other things. Right. So we're not having a special use provision or whatever they're going to call the permit. We're changing it to everybody. We put a new zone in place. Well, not if they're not a specific use. I mean, they've got to be on the list. Right. It's not everything. This is. I mean, there's there's a list of things up there that are suggested. So. This is a list not on the list. No. So let's take auto salvage yard. Okay. Somebody if wants if to I want to build a shopping center. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because I, I, they're not building an auto salvage yard. And, I guess they were. Uh, no, but they're not building those <laughs> in Flower Mound, right. where they have a lot of SUVs. Right. And in Keller and some of the other right. places. Uh, and they wouldn't have the bingo parties. They wouldn't have electric substations and they're driving. It's always been shopping centers that they're right. So. If they can build a shopping center that they have now, on the, on the zone that they have now, which we've said that the zoning would stay in place, right. you're just piling more stuff on, right? No, because in your scenario, actually, if they're not under any of these uses, if they don't have any of these uses in the development, they don't have to go through the park. Right. They but can they, just build. But they, they, they can go through those with those other places. That's a more extreme approach. That's, that's almost... That's really the SUP process that I think you're describing. The specific uh, what, what they want to do, they want to control everything that goes in. Oh, they yeah. want to control everything that goes yeah, in. Yeah, the so city. That's, that's, that's the use of uh, yeah, that's the problem SU the zoning. It's a zoning or classification. Plan it's development. Pl I'm sorry, plan, plan development. development. That's what I was looking for. Yes. Couldn't yeah. remember. That's, yeah. that's the plan yes. development, PUD, PUD, whatever they call it, uh, development, where they basically say, uh, tell us what you want to do and exactly how you want to do it, and then we'll let you know if that use is okay. Yeah, that is this is not what we're describing. This is not what we're describing. Okay, well, let me just tell you what happened in Trophy Flow in the last month. Okay. They were out there doing, a, it was a planned development, but I don't know what the zone was. But they go up there, and the mayor wanted to table this so they could come back with a plan 
how none of the businesses in there would go out of business. Because she drove by a shopping center one time, and there were a lot of empty places. She wanted them to be able to guarantee that nothing would go out of business. <laughs> and you start going, where is that even coming from? But that's, to me, it's just wanting to tell people what to do. There's always the danger of overreach <laughs> in this, this area. At the beginning of your presentation, you were talking about uh, it looks nice and everything over there. I was working for the city at the time and the, the people that had the bottle shop. The thing is that it cost so much cost for them to stay that they couldn't even afford to rent off the place. I, I know the people that ran it. They were ex and stuff. But that was the reason why they closed shop, is that it was a bad business plan and the rent was too dang high. So it wasn't any other reason than that. I just want you to understand the truth of that situation. But it does look nice. So, so do you allow them, in, you know, a lax standard because you want to make sure that business will survive? Or do you say uh, that's not it. They, they had a bad plan to go in there. They wanted to be in there. They thought they were going to be able to charge more because you had all the Stepford people that lived in Cobb <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so did they build it or did they rent it? They were renting the place. The building is done by the people who built it. They went in and rented, but the rent's so high that they thought they could do it by charging an extra three hundred dollars a car. Okay, so that wasn't onerous on the. Um, no, that was the, own, that, that was, was that was the developers. No, the developer that. developed it. The business that went into the collision center is the one who rented it. Well, that that, that was, was that was bad business. Decision. That's what I'm saying. Right. That, that was not the city making a, a bad, difficult situation for someone. No, it just made them. What I'm pointing out is that the rent was higher. It's going to be hard. It's not up to us to determine the rent. Yeah. We're causing the developer to spend more money, so he has to get some of his money back. Yeah, could have done. Could have I done think it looks buildings. nice. Understand all the Lake Park Circle, that Enterprise Circle you're talking about earlier. It all looks uniform. Looks nice. They had warehouses that are so large you can see the curvature of the earth on the pad, but it's huge. But they all look nice. You, you have to strike a balance between the standard that is almost inevitably going to cause property to cost more to develop and the yeah. exceeding the economic market yeah. for that building or that, that development. Um, any standard that you put in place is going to have a cost probably. I mean if we didn't make them put sidewalks in they wouldn't put sidewalks in. If we make them put sidewalks in it costs more. Just so the, that's the type of thing you're dealing with and there has to be a balance there because if you do go too far you right, so find a lot of vacant nice looking buildings. Going back to the process, just for everybody to be on the same page, it, this is just a heightened review process, pretty much, and the ability for the city council to to ask questions, add certain certain uh, requirements or additions uh, as it warrants by each developer. So the underlying zoning remains in place. We're not changing anybody's zoning. Uh, special use is an overlay, and it may be applied to specific area or building but it may not be the entire property. A very good good uh, example is gun, sh gun ranges, like indoor gun range, for instance. Right now, it's within our specific use zoning, but they want to come in and take only a piece of a building. Well, you can't zone a, you know, one suite in, in, on the property as, as, as a zoning. So this solves some of those problems of if you have a specific use within a portion of a building, that is something how you deal with it. You only deal with that very specific site and specific use. How is that different from just granting variances? Uh, it's, it allows you to, to, when you do variances, it, it's uh, pretty much across the board kind of. Any user can come in and do that. This pretty much ties it to certain specific uses. Well, you want to control more. But here we're talking about use. And there are no variances to use. You cannot grant a variance to use. You either grant the zoning or deny the zoning. Okay. Well, okay. too, they kind of give you a, a plan or a format that you can take to businesses and owners and developers and say, here's what we're wanting in here. If you 
you have this kind of project where you took from a variance, you got to say, well, we don't really allow that. You'll have to go to the council and we can't tell you what they'll do. We we'll support it or we won't support it. But then we don't know what council. Uh -huh. However, if you have this plan set process, yeah. then it's pretty well, we, we designed the plan and they're pretty well sure that we're. And, and maybe, I'm, maybe I'm missing something because the way you just described that, I think, well, we have like a, we have a TOD and that's a plan. Mm -hmm. So why is that, how, how is that different from a special use? Because I, I hear the exact same definition for both. No, that's, that's very different. That's a, the, the, the plan is, you know, some of these uses, again, let's, let's go back to the Yeah, we go to a developer to so with a plan. We we'll go to a developer want. to a plan, but, but these guys are coming to us. Yes. And, and they're coming to us on certain uses that you may not want to see in that, on that particular piece, right. or not see with, you know, the way they want to develop it. Let's put it that way. It's just the way that it's being developed. This allows you a, another layer of review. And you, you know, we're not putting every use in that category. Again, these are some of the uses that do need more review. Basically. These, you know, these uses are animal slaughterhouses or uh, antenna communications tower, auto sales, uh, auto salvage. Uh, we have we have added certain uses like cloak sales, auto sales, mainly because. Uh, sorry, what is this? <laughs> no more carpets. I don't no think you want that on the record. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that was no more carpets. He's trying to, yeah. he's trying to communicate. Don't panic. Don't like what goes on in my head right now. And 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 that right there, amortization. Because yeah. you've got it already zoned. You either have to change the zoning or amortize it. That's what we have for powers. Heavy equipment sales, any, basically one of our, our, because of the zoning that we have in place, a lot of this is outside storage. This is a way for, for us to take a look at those uses with outside storage and see how we control that. Again, the use could be there, but it's the way that we're approaching the use. So the comparison chart between special use permit and specific zoning that we have in place our specific use zone right now is limited to five or six uses. You can increase the greater number of, of those uses and put it under specific use permit. Uh, the affected area could be limited versus under zoning, which affected area is a town property. Zoning, so this is an overlay. It's an overlay over the existing zoning, where the specific use zone is its own zoning category. Uh, on the more permanent nature, if the zoning or a permit is flexible, less permanent nature, although those are some of the things we have to vet as we go through the ordinance and the legal office. Uh, and uh, engineering site plan is always required. You can add more, like again, reviewing of the elevations, the, uh, other, other measures of the development. And, uh, That's probably the most significant potential requirement to have that engineering site plan time of zoning as opposed to some point later on uh, because it requires some thought and, and uh, vetting of the site to make sure that it, it works. At the time of zoning? Yes. At the time of the special, special use permit or anything. Which is a zone. <clears throat> in, what's a zone. in what's happened over the years, apartments is a good example, uh, all, the, all the apartments that we've got, they were zoned. 20, 30 years ago. And once you got came out to most families too. Once you got that zoning, unless you do a amortization or something, you can't prohibit them from coming in and building apart apartments. Same thing if you had zoning to build your your business. You start up XYZ computer company. And you got the zoning part and then you build your building and you come back and say, No, you can't have that here. We're gonna build single family houses only. So whoa, wait a minute. Same thing. So that's where I should talk about that. If we've had some of them over the years that were zoned a certain way. And, and that certain have, zoning has a value attached to it, good, bad, or indifferent. Right. So it's going to jump here. Yeah, at which point it's a takings if you don't go through that. Sometimes it can become very valuable yeah, because you can't get it. We've been very fortunate in the last, I don't say 10 years, in that 
with exception of one piece, we haven't zoned any new uh, apartment uh, in those. In fact, we've reduced, reduced it. We've done a couple parcels where we, over on 121, where we took and swapped uh, some light industrial for multifamily, but when we made the swap, we came out with more light industrial than we did multifamily. In other words, we had a piece of property that was owned multifamily 100 acres. We had a piece of property over here that was owned light industrial 150 acres. We let them swap, they had the same people owned it, we let them swap their zoning. Now you only have 100 acres, like I said that back, you had 150 acres of multifamily, 100 acres of light industrial. We swapped it, now we have 150 acres of light industrial and only 100 acres. Multifamily, so you reduce that some, and that that was pretty successful down there on 121 bypass area. Just going to be in one or two or three of those areas, and some of it was off of Eber Parkway also. But once that zone is there, unless you do something like she's referring to here, it's really difficult to that amortization period. She talked about, like she said, a long time to do. Well, sorry. I agree. I agree. If we'd have looked at that back when Councilman Howard said that, on the, it was basically some uh, junkyards out there probably 50 years or more. And at that time, we'd, then we'd be eight years into that. And, and the park, this is just another use. I mean, it's not something you want to, again, apply citywide. It has to be used selectively, judiciously, and uh, with a very well thought out plan underlying but I can think of a couple of complexes just off the top of my head that might not fit such a plan if one were to develop a plan in those areas. So, again, one way of being able to. And over the years, too, when people, I can remember when I first came to Pennsylvania, back to my home, oh, the property on I 35, it was the Hilton project. So many developers come in with this grandiose idea, and they, I don't know if you remember that, but then, and they come in with these grandiose ideas, and then you end up there going there and making a zoning change request for them, and they go by the wayside. It doesn't happen. Now you're stuck with that property. And that's why sometimes here lately, we I like to see us ask for a uh, deed restriction to a piece of property. Certainly, like we we you know ask them if they'd be willing to to uh, volunteer up a deed. We cannot require, but ask if they'd be willing to volunteer a deed restriction. So in case they don't do what they're proposed to do, then this property is is this property is restricted to what it can be used for. It can only be used for that particular use. I feel like this process for these particular uses kind of you're superseding the deed restrictions. You you can meet those conditions as the city council versus private deed restrictions. Right. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, Changes that we made, like changes for the hotels that we made to in the general development, would restrict them from not you know, doing certain things that previous ordinance allowed. But those changes in the ordinance can also, those are the enhancements that we're actually talking about in addition to right. the use So these are some of the uses that we have looked in the ordinance, and we have researched extensively other cities and what other cities do. Uh, so we want to be compatible and comparable. So these are some of the uses that we feel like would fit well under the specific use permit process. As we go through the ordinance, you know, of course, we can come back to you probably several times before we actually adopt an ordinance. But it would be really good if you give us some feedback on these uses and what you think. So one of the other uh, items that we were asked to look at was alternative energy ordinances. One is wind energy. Uh, city ordinance currently prohibits wind turbines uh, unless the balance is granted. Is that any wind turbines or just these big monsters? No, anyway. Any wind Really? The little ones that don't come down? Well, that, yeah. Wind is broken be, in this city. It has to be approved through a bank. I can kind of understand. It's, it's not permitted by a lot. Actually, because I request this, I have letter finished and then I'm going to uh, give you a little bit. Actually, um, if I leave, am I going to break form since we use it? No, no. Slide form? We're going to close. So even as you come in, it has to be on case by case basis granted through a variance, but there are some specific requirements even on granting that variance, which is it has to be 30 feet above anything within 500 feet. Uh, 
uh, it causes lead blood setbacks from other structures, either other people's structures or even the same structures on the same block. So basically, in order to have these wind turbines, you, you do need large acreage or large area. So we have can researched I, other cities. Can I go ahead and talk about that wind turbine thing? The reason I asked for this item is that there is a, and, and Claude and I talked about this, there's a new generation of wind turbines out there that are called uh, late tip power systems. Uh, they don't use the turbine uh, blades to drive a gearbox to drive a generator. They use uh, rare earth magnets on the tip ends of the blades, which are then encased in a ring that has copper coil in it, and the generation is done in the ring. And I've brought you a picture. You can pass this around. And I can hold it up and you can see that this unit um, is six feet in diameter. It's noise at, uh, let's see, at, uh, at 10 feet is 35 dB, which is, if you know anything about the dB scale, is pretty minuscule. Uh, begins turning at about three and a half miles an hour, will cut itself out from generating at 35 miles an hour. That's just a protective feature. Very compact, can sit on a rooftop, very, you know, you know, unobtrusive. Uh, but the main thing is that a lot of our ordinance was driven by noise, uh, concern for noise, and rightly so, because the old wind turbines were very, very noisy and, uh, and big. And uh, I, what I would like to see us do is uh, other similar systems are starting to come into existence. There will probably be some that aren't even six feet in diameter. Um, and get vertical access wind turbines. Yeah, even, technology even those don't right. have the low noise that these have. And the reason is that they're driving uh, the generator to, you know, uh, through this motor shaft. Uh, and not all of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's using the blade tip approach, so if you want to pass that around. But anyway, I'd like for us to look at the ordinance and... Uh, are those roof mounted or yep. are still held mounted? Roof mounted. But in fact... sit on the roof? <coughs> yes. That I, and I meant to bring you ahead dozens of photographs of installations where they're all on roofs. None of them are, I mean, you can pole mount it, but it, all the pictures I have are on roofs, and they're all over the country. But in fact, they're all over the world. Um, people are using this. Belgium, Switzerland, the United States, all of, you know, Ohio, West Virginia, pick a place, they've got one. And uh, I just think it's something that we need to, you know, we can write it into our ordinance that if the decibel level is below a certain amount, if the physical size is below a certain size, then um, you don't need the variance and you don't need, you know, 500 feet and 30 feet high and so forth. Absolutely. I think with the new technology coming in, definitely that's something that we look at. Well, I just want to point out to Council that this ordinance, the current one is 06, is that right, Nika? Yeah. There are several houses in Louisville that we've got most of them documented that do have uh, some of the tur some of the small residential turbines on poles on the roof or beside the house that were in ahead of the ordinance change. So you will see some in town. We have a lot of them documented, but uh, there are oh, at least four or five at the top of my head that I know were in before the 06 ordinance. But I absolutely think that it's Changes in technology and losing some of the market and people wanting to improve the development of energy. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's a different animal from what we're used to thinking, thinking of with wind turbines, and, okay. and particularly like the picture that you showed. The showing. picture, it's yeah. Very actually, different actually, I kind of like that. <laughs> it seems like the whole subdivision is, is taking advantage of fish upon this picture, and then taking advantage of wind energy, and it's mounted on, on the street. And no, I don't have any interest in this company. I mean, it's just it was an article I've read in the Wall Street Journal and followed up on it. And, 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 there's, you know. and there's lots of different low decibel technologies out there now, small footprint. Yeah. Um, and Root if you build an ordinance that that took into account footprints, took into account. Okay. So and the, the issue on, on these type of devices, regardless of what it's rated at when it's installed, is the ongoing maintenance. And what yeah, happens to it if it starts malfunctioning and the complaints that we would possibly have to feel to deal with that situation? But you get that same issue when those little fans, fans the little fans start squeaking. Bent, bent fans are, we get complaints about those periodically. <laughs> so, so 
readers and some other cities. I don't think anybody's the head of, especially in this area, head of anybody else in health technology. But a lot of them, a lot of guys specifically use COVID only. Uh, not there are a lot of the two acres, that's a lot of the lot, and that is the technology. Solar energy, we do allow it right now in, in, in the city. We have some houses that have solar power on it. We encourage it. And if somebody wants to do it, absolutely. Uh, it just has to meet uh, manufacturer specifications. The permit is required. Food must support the structure. And again, many permits have been issued in the city specifically for food infrastructure. Frisco has a green building program, and every I'm sure if you've been to any uh, conferences or you know talk to them, they really make it like a big program. But truly, it's really not much more than what we have in place right now because. Uh, the energy code, actually, the, uh, the international energy code that went, went into place several years ago, that has changed, the, especially for residential construction. That's, that has brought in a lot of energy efficiencies. Uh, we can go, of course, above and beyond that, but we can certainly... Uh, Fire and space do the same. Very, yes. Okay. <laughs> very, very similar. Well, so, you know, we and we have a zero energy side, by side. I bet they don't have that. We have a zero energy. Uh, did Amanda leave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a quick comment, uh, Nico. On, um, Austin just implemented a permits where uh, I think they require large, I don't know, y'all might know, but they need to require the uh, given incentive. I think they require um, gray water recycling in new residential construction. Austin. In Austin? Austin? I don't think any of them. I think there's some neighborhoods, but again, it's an added requirement, but I don't think it's a city. I haven't looked into it's probably city, not but I will. Yeah, I will but you look into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll check. The design workshop is working on our plug on the bed. <coughs> of certain types of uses, uh, very particular uses like uh, the uh, payday loans or the thrift stores, or the one cent store, or whatever. You know, the, the lowest common denominator might be. Could you address uh, regulation maybe or with Liz? Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. There's an ordinance in Dallas that's somewhat designed to well, we can talk about the ordinance in Dallas. Um, that that actually doesn't have anything to do with the land use. It, they're trying to regulate payday uh, loan places through their their business um, registration stuff like that, not the actual where they can locate. Uh, I'd like to do the rest of it in executive session. Okay. Then you go Okay, well now convenient to